the Great Search brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. Thank you, DigiKey. Lady Ada uses her powers of searching and finding, especially in the middle of this drought, this chip drought, to show you how to find what you're looking for. Lady Ada, what is the Great Search this week? Okay, the Great Search is what I, actually what I did today. So, because some Sundays I'm like, what am I going to do for the Great Search? And then today I was like, oh man, I got to find an alternative for this part that I can't get, that I can't get, and the alternative I can't get, and before you know it, you're like four that layers down. That sounds exactly like Great Search. That's the Great Search. That's where we're at. So, um, so for this design, um, you know, this design for this feather, I used the LC790203 battery monitor chip. The, the TDFN version is no longer available. It went end of line. There was no last time buy because of the silicon shortage, and so I kind of got like the rug pulled out under me. That's a good idiom. Well, pulled out under you. We're mm. collecting idioms. Um, and stuck without an alternative. And there is the, uh, you know, we covered, okay, we well, can always get alternative packages sometimes. And there is an alternative package for this chip, the BGA package. And I can use uh, that BGA package, you know, temporarily, basically for a few months, but it will also run out. It's end of line. So I want to find an alternative lithium ion single cell battery monitor, something that has an ADC communicates over I squared C um, and doesn't use a lot of power so that, you know, I can stick this on. It has the, you know, it does the battery monitoring, Coulomb counting, state of charge calculations for you um, while still letting the main processor go into deep sleep. And when it wakes up, it can always ask the uh, chip, what's the state? And of course, I want it to be inexpensive. I want it to be easy to use. And I want it to be a package that I can put on a two layer board. So I thought that's what we would do. All right, let's do it. Okay, so let's go to the computer. Okay, so um, this is the previous package, the chip that I was gonna use, the TDFN chip. And then, uh, you know, I can swap that for the BGA package. And this, this will, again, I can kind of limp along with this for a few months because I can get some of these, but eventually those will run out. And uh, this, is, this is the life we're living. So um, the chip that I was using before was, was basically this one. Um, you know, this is no longer manufactured. It says some substitutes, you know, it has some substitutes, but we're going to, we're going to do our great search substitution work. So what I want is a battery monitor. Uh, I want to do one lithium ion, um, uh, thing, uh, I squared C and surface mount, although, you know, they're all going to be surface mount. And, uh, let's see what we've got for similar devices. Um, I'm not going to say normally stocking or in stocking. I want to say um, no marketplace just because it's a little confusing. I want to just, I, I'm kind of in the specification stage, so it's like I don't really care whether it's in stock right now, as long as I can get it in a few months. Um, and I want to look at prices in, in the you know 5,000 piece range or so. And, um, you know, as you can see, there, this is the chip that I historically liked. You know, these are the two versions. They're the least expensive at about 70 cents a piece. Uh, the BGA version and the um, uh, LC709 uh, TDFN version. But, you know, not this one not available. This one I can use until they run out of stock. So let's go down the list. Ooh, the BQ27426. Okay, this looks pretty is that good. The one? No. What? Is that the one? No. Well, no. Not only is it not in stock, <laughs> but if I ask it, when's it going to be in stock? It says April 2022. Mm. Okay, so, so it's not only are we trying to find a part, but I'm like... I really want a part I can get, you know, like this year, maybe, you know, would that be so hard? Maybe get it in the next like three months. Um, we were spoiled when we were, when we were babies buying parts that were in stock. Um, this family is, you know, it is quite a nice uh, family of chips, but yeah, basically, you know, all of them are uh, April, 2022. Um, this is the same uh, part of that family. Um, this one, I think, is also, you know, t September 2022, like not even within the next year I'm going to be able to get this part. Um, so I basically kind of went down this entire list, and um, until I, and then this one was okay, but I really didn't want a, a BGA, again, I want something that's a two-layer board, I don't want something that's BGA with, with middle pads, because I really don't want something that's going to be a a pain to route. Um, so what I did find, you know, I basically like scanned through this. Almost all of these are completely unavailable <laughs> anytime soon, except for 
this one, the Max 17048. And this one not only has 3,000 in stock, but it has 9,000 in the factory. It's not expensive, but it is TDFN. I can get it, you know, quickly. Um, another thing you can do is, of course, you can put down, you know, even more. And you can see, like, well, there's going to, you know, if I need 30,000, I'm not going to get them till 2022. But there are going to be two more shipments of, of 10,000 a piece so in October. So, you know, I, I, if this is something I want to book for nearby delivery, you know, I have a shop. But again, it is in stock. And I'm not going to need more than 10,000. I just kind of know that that's 10,000 a year is about how many, you know, that's how many I'm going to need for now. Um, so I think that, you know, this is kind of what I'm thinking of, of going with. So I designed a, um, I did a, a, you know, a board package for it and uh, laid out the, the package. And then I designed a breakout for it. So, you know, this is what I start with whenever I want to design. I basically pulled out the um, LC79203 uh, and I put this in. One nice thing about this chip is it doesn't have, uh, the, some of the, the BQ chips, the TI chips, um, used Coulomb counting. When they had their basically a resistor between the input and output. And one thing that is kind of nice about the, this Max 17 chip is like the OnSemi LC709203, um, it doesn't have a resistor. It actually looks at the voltage, the, the historical um, measurement of the voltage to track what the um, state of charge is. And, and I, you know, I kind of like that. I think it's nice because it doesn't matter, if, you know, especially for a breakout board where people can accidentally connect the wrong way. Um, this is a um, kind of an elegant um, method of measuring because you don't have to worry about having it backwards and you don't have to worry about the resistance, you know, being in the way of your, your boost converter or something or affecting um, something down the line. So I'm going to start with this. I normally actually would have gone for the BQ chips. The BQ chips were quite nice. Um, they were much less expensive and uh, they, they had I2C and they had, you know, also either voltage or built-in coulomb counting capability but if i can't get it in the next you know six to 12 months even if that's if that's as soon as i can get it um i'm going to start actually designing with parts that are more expensive just so i can get something out the door and then reevaluate in a year it's easy to then you know i can always reduce the cost later by subbing out the old part but not being able to ship something costs money every single day so yeah these are the design trade-offs um, i'm currently making is Going with parts I normally wouldn't go with just because I can get them, knowing that I'll probably have to do a redesign down the line, but, you know, I'll deal with that later. You know, I'll, I'll say, hey, I redesigned this for a cheaper chip, and here is a new driver, and, and here's the differences. And I've done that before. Um, we've designed a lot of our feather boards, or early metro boards, whatever, with FTDI chips. And then when we could get Scilab's USB to serial converters, which I like a little bit more than the FTDI ones, they're less expensive and they have a couple of capabilities that I like, um, very high speed you know, data transfer and stuff. I redesigned a lot of boards and said, okay, I used to use the FTDI chip, now using the Scilab's chip. Well, the Scilab's chip is also end of line. So maybe we'll do a future show where I, I show how to swap out a Scilab's 2104 as well. Yay, it's like juggling. All right. And that's the great search.